It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for what the, I mean, WTF print industry news. And today I'm asking who the hell's controlling the narrative to those friends of mine that sell supply and service print equipment. The reason I started the WTF print industry news was because our industry's actors are not the only people that read these blogs, that listen to these analysts. The financial community abroad, when they're trying to study our industry, they go to these industry media analysts and blogs. End users read these industry media and blogs. And it's important if they're going to put information and publish it, that it's accurate. And unfortunately, my friends, many, many times, there's a lot of crap that's being published in our industry's media and analyst blogs. And I have to ask the OEMs a question. What the hell? Maybe you ought to shake things up a little bit. I mean, you invite the same people to sit up front at that table. They take notes of what's being said. And when you read the articles about the event, they're all pretty much exactly the same. I mean, it's like they wait for someone to publish and then they all just copy and paste whatever the first person publishes. It's pretty absurd to begin with. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, this Conica Minolta Roadshow meeting down in Florida has really brought to light some big issues in our industry. Last week, I pointed out that the Kanata report in their summation of the meeting said that Conica Minolta had an 18.5 billion dollar operating profit. And of course, that's just absurd at all levels. I mean, that's like three years worth of Conic Minolta's revenue, okay? And I called it out. And then I even challenged him in a tweet. Are you, ever, are you guys going to fix this? Well, they fixed it. Unfortunately, it's still wrong. And then it made me dig a little bit deeper. And I was reading an article published about the event in ENX. I was reading an article published about the event in the Imaging Channel magazine. And I'm like, what in the hell? This is such a stupid mistake that it just... It makes you think, what else is just crazy about that meeting? Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm going to say. The CEO of Conica US does not understand the Conica financials, or the industry's media didn't understand or does not care to understand anything the CEO said. So if the CEO says something and they make a mistake in what they're saying, our industry's media and else, they're not going to question it. They're just going to copy and paste it. They don't want to do any research to see if what that person just said even makes any sense. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a big mistake. This isn't a little mistake. This is a big mistake. And it's outlining a problem. A problem with our industry's media and analysts. Or worse, we got a CEO that's running Conica Minolta USA that doesn't understand financials. It's one or the other. And like I said, if Sam just made a mistake, that's fantastic. But the industry's media and analysts should have never printed that mistake. And because they printed that mistake, you would think someone at Conica Minolta would have called their asses up and said, you need to fix that. You're making me look stupid. But none of that's happened. These articles are still out there. They're still published. They're still saying the same thing. You're dying to know what they said, aren't you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll share it with you. ENX Magazine, let me just read it. Reviewing the company's third quarter financials noted that the slight revenue decrease was driven by an 11 million impairment charge absorbed by the company's planetarium business. They're talking about an 11 million dollar impairment charge was the reason they had a decrease in revenue. Now I know most of you understand how stupid that is. But that same thing was just said in the Imaging Channel magazine. Address the slight decrease in revenue noting the company took an impairment loss of 11 million in its planetarium business. Those of you that don't understand this, an impairment charge has not a damn thing to do with revenue. It's on the other side. It has nothing to do with revenue. You don't believe me? Well, let's see what Wikipedia says. Impairment, financial reporting, impairment of asset is the diminishing in quality, strength, amount, or value of an asset. An impairment cost must be included under the expenses when the book value of an asset exceeds the recoverable amount. It has nothing to do with revenue. It's a hit on profit. It's a hit on profit. And so there's a couple issues here that are big issues, ladies and gentlemen. Either the CEO actually believes that they got a decrease in revenue because of an impairment charge in the planetarium business, or the industry's media and analysts don't understand at all what an impairment charge is and how it hits the financials, or even worse, Conica Minolta read the articles and allowed it to be published. What the hell is it? You see why I started the WTF, Print Industry News? 
Let's talk about the mistake that was written in the Kanata report. I did an episode on it. And ladies and gentlemen, I didn't do this episode so I could beat up the people over the Kanata report. I did this episode because I'm pointing out mistakes. Mistakes that financial community reads. The mistakes that dealers read. The mistakes that industry end users read. And when it's this outrageous of a mistake, it needs to be corrected. It needs to be corrected. And it's not the first time the Kanata report has made these kind of mistakes. So, to recap... The mistake they made was they said that Conica Minolta had an operating profit of $18.5 billion with revenue and profit in the office up 23%. Well, they decided they would fix that. I challenged them. I put a tweet out there even. Are you all going to fix the mistake you made? You know how they fixed it? Well, let me share it with you because it's still wrong. I got my magic pen in my hand. Here's the article. If you pull it up on their website, you'll see that it's fixed. You know what they did? They changed it to 18.5 billion yen. Why do you think they did that? Because that's a wrong number, by the way. I'll share that in a minute. But why do you think they did that? Here's why I think they did it. They did it because they would replace the dollar sign with the yen so that everybody reading that article would think Ray's just a big asshole. Everybody knew that they just made a mistake. It should have been a yen instead of a dollar sign. No big deal, Ray. You made a big deal about nothing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they did it because they want you to think that. What's more ironic about this, they didn't even bother to do any more research. You think after being called out, let's really dig into this. What was the real operating profit? Because I don't come up with 18.5 billion yen anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the digital workplace and the professional print together for the third quarter, the operating profit was 14.9 billion yen. If you look at the digital workplace and the professional print business units together for the whole nine months of FY 2023, the operating profit is 28.5 billion yen. I'm not sure where they came up with the 18.5 billion yen. I'm not sure where they came up with revenue and profit in the office up 23%. I don't know where they came up with that. If you look for nine months for the operating profit for the digital workplace, and that's where that office business would be. And by the way, you know, they don't separate out the operating profit for the public to see between DWDX and the office space. So if they're sharing some of these numbers, they should you should all demand, what is that exact number? We need to understand this a little more so you can break out these profit margins. Because ladies and gentlemen, the digital workplace had a year over year operating advance, if you will, 83%. Without the Forex, it was plus 56%. Of course, keep in mind, these percentages are high because Conic and Minolta has been struggling to make any kind of profitability for three years in a row, so they better be above. But at the end of the day, I don't see where it's up 23%. I don't see how office is up 23%. Do you? I mean, wh why are we not accurate with the numbers? L ladies and gentlemen, let's look at this a little bit deeper. If they were talking about just the quarter, just the quarter, for the, for the third quarter, the digital workplace and the professional print, the business contribution operating profit was down 23% without Forex. It was only up 3%. Professional print, it was down 22% without the Forex. It was down 6% year over year. Nowhere there, 23%. If you look at the revenue for digital workplace, it was actually down 7% without the Forex. Year over year, it was down 2%. Professional print was up 1% year over year and down 4% without the Forex. This is important information because the questions for Conica and Ulta are the only way you're going to get more operating profit is the weakness of the end because if that's the case, what happens when the end straightens out, right? When it's not so weak anymore. We've got some fundamental issues going on there at Conic and Minolta. We've got an industry's analysts and media that are just writing a bunch of nonsense and publishing it. And I would ask you the source for the 17% market share. We can't just say Conic and Minolta has a 17% market share. Where's that coming from? Conic and Minolta? What do they do? Call up people? Are you using Conic and Minolta? Yep. They called 100 people. They knew 17 of those people were using Conica. So now they got a 17% market share. How do, I mean, where does it come from? Ladies and gentlemen, they also say in the Kanata report 
that the market share in industrial print is 12.7%. What's the source on that? What's the source on that? I'm just asking the questions. These are the questions I believe the media should be asking of the OEMs. What the hell's the source of this 12%? Tell us where you got that information. And if they share that information at the meeting, then you need to make that part of the article. Because I'm really confused. They might say they got a 12.7% industrial print footprint, but holy, holy crap, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, in the third quarter, they only did $57.3 million in that business. I've shared with you what they're doing in that business for the first nine months of the year. I want to dig a little bit deeper into that in a second. But the other thing I want to bring up is this crazy nonsense about AI. Our industry is becoming obsessed with AI based on what? Based on what? Where are we getting all these numbers from? If used properly, it can provide a 27% increased bandwidth in sales. The theme of the presentation was that sales should treat AI technology as a teammate. If used properly, it can provide a 27% increased bandwidth. What the hell does that even mean? And where are you getting this 27% number from? But boy, you're sitting in the audience, 27% increase in bandwidth. Why? We got to get into AI. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe conica has got the answer. Maybe there's someone that used to be like a managed print service specialist that's now doing AI, we could call them and they could tell us how we're going to get a 27% increase in bandwidth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's beyond absurdity. Let's look at this industrial print. I want to do a quick comparison. Our friends at Brother did 535.2 million in industrial print space. I did an episode on it. I showed you the equipment. 535.2 million dollars for Brother Industrial print for the first nine months of their FY 2023, same nine months as Konica Minolta. Konica Minolta sitting at 175.2 million. That's the reality. The, the industrial print business for Konica Minolta represents 3.1% of Konica's total company revenue. If you look over here at Brother, it represents 13.4% of their total revenue because their total revenue for the nine months was 4 billion. What's the difference between Konica Minolta and Brother and how our industry sees them in industrial print? A lot of folks in our industry didn't even know that Brother was in industrial print. You know why? Because it's handled by separate people with a separate responsibility that were tasked to go out and grow industrial print business. And they're smacking the crap out of Konica because numbers don't lie. When I think about Konica Minolta and their industrial print, I mean, what, why are we even talking about this with a bunch of dealers that are never going to sell any industrial print? Why is it even a factor? Why do we care? More importantly, Konica Minolta, I believe if you took the industrial print business and you treated it the way our friends over here at Brother treated their industrial print business, maybe you could actually compete with them from a revenue standpoint. Because I would have asked the damn question. You know, what are you going to do to beat Brother in industrial print? What are the goals at Konica Minolta? You're bringing it up. If the leader's going to bring this up, then they should be able to be asked questions about it. If they're going to bring up they had operating profit in office at 23% growth, then damn it, share with us what that is all about because I'd love to know those numbers. I would love to know the numbers of the profit in office. I'd love to know the numbers of the profit at all covered. By the way, none of these articles address anything to do with all covered. So when I tell you all that Conica Minolta is going to exit from all covered, there might be some merit to that rumor. The other thing they did at this meeting, the leader, we're moving out of China. We're moving out of China. Ladies and gentlemen, all the OEMs are going to be moving out of China. But I've asked this question numerous times. I've never gotten a damn answer. Not anybody else in our industry media analysts have ever asked the question. Why does Conica not address this relationship? More importantly, why am I the only one asking? 2019, there they are, the then CEO of Konica Minolta and the CEO of Nine Star doing an agreement, collaborating. We're coming together. We're going to do some great things in 2019. August 28th of 2019. Where's this relationship at today? Why is this not being talked about? This would have been a great thing to talk about when the CEO of U.S. Konica was sitting on stage at a BTA meeting addressing slave labor that all had to do with Nine Star. Didn't even come up. Didn't even come up. Why is that?
Ladies and gentlemen, my friends of the Imaging Channel, the Kanata Report, and EX Magazine, I suggest you kind of do what Keypoint Intelligence does. Just go to Kanaka Minolta's website, pull up their press release, put a link to that, and call it good. Call it good. You'd be better off. OEMs should accept challenges and welcome the pressures of the press or analysts. OEMs try to control the narrative with our industry's media and analysts aren't going to help anybody improve anything because everybody watching me knows this status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see you all tomorrow.